Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. Recently I found out that I've been cooking my sugar rocket fuel way too hot. Let's find out why. Now the main topic of today's video is going to be the infrared thermometer that we use to check the temperature of the fuel while we're cooking it. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the cooking temperature for flexi fuel. Now if you're not familiar with flexi fuel, it's a sugar fuel made of potassium nitrate, powdered sugar, and corn syrup. And it's the sugar fuel that I use in all my rocket motors. Now flexi fuel was invented by Dan Paulino. About a year ago I had the pleasure of meeting Dan and we talked about rocketry and flexi fuel and I got some of the documentation about how he used to make flexi fuel sugar fuel. And I was surprised to find out that his cooking temperature was only 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Now when I was learning about flexi fuel several years ago, I was seeing people cook it to as much as 270 degrees Fahrenheit, about 60 degrees higher than Dan's original temperature. So why is there such a drastic temperature difference in the cooking process for the same product? Well, there could be a couple of different reasons. First might just be a procedural difference. See, when Dan was making his fuel, he would preheat the potassium nitrate in an oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes to drive out any moisture that may be trapped in the potassium nitrate. Now that's not a bad idea, but I haven't seen anybody else doing that. Now another reason you might cook sugar fuel to a higher temperature is just personal preference. If you're looking for a harder, less pliable fuel that burns a little bit faster, cooking it to the higher temperature will achieve those results. Now when I started making flexi fuel several years ago, the instructions I was following were telling me to cook it to about 265 to 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I used the infrared thermometer that I had, but I found that after it got to over 230 degrees Fahrenheit, according to this thermometer, the fuel started burning. You'd get brown streaks throughout the fuel, and you could just see that the sugars were starting to burn, which is not a good thing. So I found that 230 was about the maximum temperature that I was able to cook it to before that would start happening. So that simply became the cooking temperature that I always used. Well, I've recently found out that this infrared thermometer is actually not accurate. So 230 degrees, according to this thermometer, is significantly higher. And that's why the fuel was burning when I was trying to push the temperature higher. At 230 degrees Fahrenheit, this particular infrared thermometer is about 60 degrees off. So that means that I was actually cooking the fuel to around 290 degrees Fahrenheit. And trying to go above that, we're pushing the fuel well over 300 degrees, and that's why the sugars were burning. Now this infrared thermometer is about 25 years old, and it's one that I use for work. So every time we needed to make rocket fuel, I'd have to go out to the work vehicle and get this. And then when we were finished, I'd have to remember to put it back in the work vehicle. Well, I was looking online and I found that I could buy a cheap one for about $15, so that's what I did. I got just a cheap little Chinese infrared thermometer. It was only about $15. Well, about a week after this showed up, I needed to make some rocket fuel for a launch. I thought it would be a good idea while I'm making the fuel to check the temperature with both of these just to see if they were accurate. Well, right away I could see there was a serious problem. As the fuel was heating up, the temperature difference between the readings on these got bigger and bigger and bigger. And not just one or two degrees, it was 10 degrees difference, and then 30 degrees difference, and then 40 degrees difference. In fact, by the time that my old one was reading 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the new one was reading 260 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a huge difference. Well, I ended up finishing the fuel using my old one because that's the one I always use and I had to finish the fuel and it went perfectly fine, but it brought up the question of which one of these is accurate? I need to know which one is accurate so that I can throw the bad one away and have an accurate tool for making rocket fuel and also have an accurate tool for work. So I had an idea of how I could test it, but before I tested it, I wanted to get one more infrared thermometer. And this time, not just a cheap little Chinese one. I wanted to buy a really good one, the best I could find, in fact. So I chose to buy the Fluke 62 Max Plus. This is a fantastic tool. So now, with all three of these, I'm ready to do some testing. 
So, I need something that I can heat up to an accurate temperature. Well, I realized I have an oven in the kitchen. Now, the oven can be set to just about any temperature I want, but the temperature in the oven isn't always very consistent. It varies a little bit as the burner comes on and off. So, I have this little thermometer that goes in the oven that tells me the exact temperature in the oven. So, I set the oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and I took some measurements with each one of them. I took four measurements with each thermometer, and I averaged all those together. So, with the oven set to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and the thermometer in the oven reading exactly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the four readings of my old one, averaged together, came to 158.75 degrees, meaning that at 200 degrees, this is 40 degrees off. That's not good. So then the four readings of the Chinese one, averaged together, came to 208.5 degrees. A little bit high, but very close. The four readings of the Fluke, averaged together, amazingly came to exactly 200 degrees. So I figured it would be a good idea to do the test at a slightly higher temperature, just so we can see how the infrared thermometers are reacting through a range of temperatures. So I turned the oven up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So then the readings for the old one came to 230.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So at 300 degrees, this was now reading 70 degrees too low. The readings for the Chinese one came to 311.25 degrees. Again, a little bit high, but much better than my old one. And then the readings averaged together for the Fluke came to 297.5 degrees, well within the tolerance for this particular tool. So overall, what does that mean? Well, if we were cooking fuel using our old infrared thermometer, reading to a temperature of 230 degrees Fahrenheit, that means that we were actually cooking the fuel to 290 degrees Fahrenheit. So really for all the motors that we've ever built, the fuel has been cooked to somewhere between 280 and 290 degrees Fahrenheit far above not only what Dan's specifications say, but also above the temperatures that I've seen anybody cook flexi fuel to. So, in short, we really need to throw this away. So, before we throw that away though, I want to do a little test. We're going to use this one more time. I'm going to make two batches of rocket fuel. I'm going to make one batch using the infrared thermometer the same way that we always have been. It'll read 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and essentially that fuel will be 290 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll launch a rocket with that. And then I'll make the exact same motor using the Fluke. And then we'll cook that one to 210 degrees Fahrenheit according to Dan Paulino's instructions. And we'll launch a rocket with that motor. So there'll be identical motors, identical rockets, just drastically different cooking temperatures for the fuel. We'll be looking for two specific things. We'll be looking for launch speed, how well is the rocket coming off of the launch rod initially, and also total altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and build those motors, and we'll be right back. I'm almost into the mainframe. I'm in. Hey, you don't have to hack the system to get yourself a Rotary Rocket 3 t-shirt. Click the link in the description to access our shop. Hey, check this out. Available in a wide range of colors with a variety of graphics. Get yours today. Well, since this is the first time we've actually cooked the fuel to that low temperature of 210 degrees Fahrenheit, that makes this an experimental motor. So we always need to test an experimental motor before putting it in a rocket. So let's check it out.
Wow, that was a really great ground test. That motor burnt for a little over two seconds, almost 2.2 seconds. So I've built the two motors that we're gonna launch, the one with the standard temperature that we've always been cooking to, and then the 210 degree temperature. We're gonna go out and launch those both in our Eliminator 10 rocket. So let's go see how they perform. Two beautiful launches. Now the one with the overcooked 290 degree fuel flew to 1,122 feet. And the one with the properly cooked 210 degree fuel flew to 1,030 feet. And we typically see a flight altitude of between 1,000 and 1,200 feet with that rocket and that motor. So both of those launches are well within the expected altitude. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the launch. I've synchronized both of these videos so that the rockets start moving at exactly the same time. Now right here, just as the rockets are getting off of the launch rod, we see that the one with the 210 degree fuel is actually ahead of the one with 290 degree fuel. That was actually unexpected. But when we watch the launch from the camera that was further away, we see that given a little bit of more time, the one with the 290 degree fuel actually overtakes the one with 210 degree fuel. And that's because the 290 degree fuel is burning a little bit faster, so that fuel is being consumed faster. And we can see that here in this shot. Right here, the 290 degree fuel is completely depleted. That motor is finished. But if we watch a little bit further, you see that the 210 degree fuel continues to burn for a little bit longer. So overall, I really like the performance of the 210 degree fuel. And because that fuel burns a little bit slower, I think we probably could decrease the nozzle size on that motor, which would increase the performance and probably give us a slightly higher altitude. But that's a project for a different video. And moving forward, I will definitely be using the Fluke thermometer to measure the temperature of the fuel. And I think it's probably not a bad idea every six months to a year to use the oven to just double check to make sure that the tool is reading properly. Hey, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get notifications for our future videos. I'm working on a couple of really fun projects that I think you're going to like. A couple of rocket builds as well as a couple of motor tutorials. Make sure you hit that like button before you leave. We really appreciate it. And be sure to check out the full line of Rotary Rocketry t-shirts. There's a link to the shop down in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.